What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to take a look at an article that lists the nine most ridiculous myths people still believe about fighter jets on hot cars. Uh, we'll see if the article is more ridiculous than the myths or vice versa. This was written by uh, Wyatt Peterson, which I don't believe has any experience in fighter aviation. So whether from Hollywood or Navy moms, not everything you think you know about fighter jets may be right. Let's find out. All right, so uh, Wyatt here uh, wrote this, and it says, fighter jets are amazing, feat of technology, yet Hollywood is fed on that admiration, and uh, as can be expected, a lot of facts have been lost in translation. That is actually true. So um, we've done Mover Ruins movies. They get it wrong a lot. So yeah, okay, we're doing great so far. Uh, it's amazing that most of the jets we know about, the single most expensive weapons platform ever, 1.5 trillion to develop, is Fat Amy. Um, there's Top Gun, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, just in time for the release of Top Gun Maverick. I don't know about just in time. You got another like six to nine months. It's not till next year. Uh, sorry if we ruin it. <laughs> That's my job. But uh, here are nine things that need to be cleared up about fighter jets. How the afterburner works. Uh, we see visuals of jets, whether in cartoons or movies, almost always have a flame behind them. In Wonder Woman, we have a jet taxi and burner. I need to watch that one. Sounds like something I need to ruin. Uh, there's some kind of flames behind it to the point children almost always draw jets with flames coming out the back because afterburners are cool. Truth is, afterburners are rarely used, false, and are more common for takeoff, true, combat, true, or supersonic flight, true. Having constant visible flame would be a tactical nightmare, Especially at night, true. So, I mean, if your nose on, you can't really see it. So, eh, it's kind of, I give that one kind of a push. In reality, afterburner or reheat is a more risky, false, fuel consumptive, true, option that wears down the engines. Eh, not really, no, no. So, times that we use afterburner. Um, most of the time on takeoff, the F-16, we use the afterburner anytime we were a two bag jet, so uh, 370 gallon fuel tanks with uh, air to ground configuration or air to air with the two bags. Uh, clean, we actually did mill power takeoffs. In the Hornet, we always did afterburner takeoffs. Uh, in the T-38, we always do afterburner takeoffs. So that part is true. The, uh, in tactical scenarios, the real reason you don't use afterburner is because it burns a lot of fuel. So if we're trying to conserve fuel for capping, so if we're just marshalling or orbiting, you know, I guess you could call it, uh, you know, to, to put it in simplistic terms, you're not going to be an afterburner because you want to save fuel. Tactically speaking, though, you're going to use afterburner a lot. BFM, dogfighting, you're going to be an afterburner a lot. Um, air to ground stuff, you're not going to be an afterburner a whole lot because um, there's just no need to. So it just depends on what the tactical situation is. This is kind of mostly true, but uh, wears down the engines false. It doesn't do any more wear than normal. I mean, we don't track how often we go to afterburner now. Continuous afterburner use, not a good thing, but the way we use it, I mean, we're not worried about prematurely wearing down the engine or anything like that. All right, uh, number eight, solo missions are successes. Uh, let's see, there was Green Lantern, Top Gun, Sky Fighters, just to start. In real combat, a single pilot, million dollar machine would turn the tide to war. The risk is non option. That's true. Uh, you may have heard saying they're old pilots, no, uh, old pilots or bold pilots, never both. Well, that's not exactly the same, uh, but close. Real in combat, if a pilot were ever without a wingman, he would almost immediately retreat, success being improbable. Eh, it depends. Depends on the jet. It depends on what your acceptable loss ratio is, where you are tactically. If you're the last line of defense to defend your point, you're not going to retreat. You're going to fight. You're just going to keep fighting until you're Winchester uh, or out of uh, so out of ammo or out of fuel. So not I've done single ship missions. I've done single ship close air support missions. I've done single ship recce missions uh, with um, pods to take pictures and stuff. So that's yes and no. I agree with him, though, on the premise that you're not going to win the war by yourself. And we have wingman consideration and we try to operate in two and four ships and stuff like that. But um, I, to, to say that you're never going to be a single ship or you'll just retreat if that happens, eh, false. How dog fights work? Oh, this one should be fun. First of all, dog fights are very, very rare. True. And I get this a lot 
where people are like, well, you know, how many air to air kills do you have? No one has many air to air. There's like three or four in the last 20 years. I mean, there's just not a lot of air to air kills and there's especially not a lot where they actually went in a dog fight. Usually the air to air kills are unobserved or they shot a missile and shot somebody down. Um, BVR or without the other person even knowing the actual dog fight itself. Those are exceedingly rare uh, where you wrap it up with somebody. Uh, since World War II, there have been few countries with access to aircraft in opposition to countries with aircraft. Eh, I mean, not true. Korea, Vietnam, uh, Desert Storm, uh, the Six Day War, you know, um, there's, there's plenty of examples uh, since World War II. I would say it's more since um, the turn of the century is really where there's not been many opposing forces with that. But there are two sides with jets are normally used to give ground troops, ground troops an advantage, take out opposing targets like bases and supplies and do reconnaissance. Well, that's true, but you got to have air superiority to do all of that. When they're just trying to take each other out, if one jet gets behind you at all, you're done for. Mm, not necessarily. That's why we practice defensive BFM. Defensive basic fighter maneuvers. I mean, maybe. It depends. The best you can do is twitch your wings a side to side jinking to dodge a burst of fire. Okay, no. Twitch. Wow. No. Okay, so jinking is usually an out of plane. So I've, I've said this before about jinking, right? But people are always like, why are you saying jinking? Jinking is a gun's defense. It's not an anti missile thing, it's a gun's defense, and it's an out of plane maneuver. So, what you're trying to do is spoil a gunshot. Because for a gunshot to be valid, it has to be in plane, in range, in lead for the bullet time of flight. Those are the things that it needs. So you're trying to spoil that by getting out of plane with some maneuver, sometimes three dimensional, sometimes you're just getting out of plane uh, temporarily just to spoil a shot, bunting, climbing or whatever. The wing side to side thing, that would do nothing. You're not even changing your flight path if you do that. So that's, that's stupid. Otherwise, complicated maneuvers are used with the goal of getting the enemy somewhere in front of you. True. I don't know about complicated, but BFM, that's their basic. They're not complicated. Sorry, uh, the cover maneuver used to get behind enemy jets is an impractical move. Eh. True and false. Uh, it, I, I can see where the Cobra and a high alpha maneuver would be useful if you're in kind of like a one circle fight or, you know, very close aboard. You're, you're trying to get uh, a high off bore sight shot on the other aircraft. So, eh. plus, yes or no. Uh, it is more of an air show maneuver, but it does have some uh, applicability. I, I wouldn't say it's uh, completely impractical. And that whole, I can't get a lock while flying in a big circle is just the meaning of fighter jets, true abilities. Well, dog fighting is about circles. You have your turn circle, you have, uh, your outside of a turn circle. You need to get inside the turn circle. Uh, you have rate, you have radius. These are all, um, basically turning in circles, believe it or not. So, uh, I don't think that that's true. As far as I can't get a lock. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Top Gun where he couldn't get a lock on. Yeah, that's not true, but you are waiting to get inside a weapons engagement zone. So I would say because Hollywood simplifies it and says, yeah, I can't get a lock. Really, it's about I can't get a firing solution because I'm outside of a, a WES or, uh, you know, I don't have the angles that I need. But it absolutely is turning in circles. I mean, that's the basics. Now, it's a simplification, but yes, it is turning in circles. Um, now, some fighters obviously can do high alpha or post stall maneuvers, but the basics are always the same, even with those fighters. All right, let's see here. Tracing missiles follow their targets. I don't even know what tracing missiles means. Yes, tracing missiles exist and can change course, but unlike almost, what the hell is a tracing missile? But unlike almost every tracing missile we see on screen, they don't pursue targets. That's true. Talked about that in Behind Enemy Lines and that other one with Sherdill. Uh, we're using used to missiles being fired, some targeted pilot yelling, I got a bogey on my six, and watching the missiles swirl and loop being faster and faster until it makes contact or messes up and hits a mountain nearby. Truth is, ground to air, air to air missiles like this will just adjust for a few seconds mid flight or a few degrees before continuing straight. The right positioning and firing, it's normal enough to take out a target unless they have the effective flares you see above. Normally, just a precaution to make missiles adjust incorrectly before straightening out. Not necessarily true. Um, they're decoys, so you're trying to get the missile to decoy off on the flare. So no heat-seeking missiles won't be able to follow you through a narrow canyon or even a few extra degrees of turning. Through a narrow canyon, no extra degrees of turning, yes. I mean, they can. there are some phenomenal high-off-bore sight weapons that can do some really impressive in-game maneuvering. 
Um, they're not going to chase you. So I think where he's mistaken is m missiles can be maneuverable in game. That part is true. What they won't do is chase you because the time of flight's not that long. They don't have rocket motors with unlimited fuel. They won't wily e. coyote you around the desert floor and canyon and then hit a mountain. But they will, like if you don't maneuver at all and it guides on you and you maneuver just a little bit and you're not outside of that in-game maneuverability, it will still hit you because it still can pull, you know, high G turn to make that uh, intercept happen. So, yeah, not necessarily, but close. All right, number five, 250 caliber guns. Yeah, it's true. Most jets appear to have two guns on either side firing at a rate that's visible and making intense pop, 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 pop sound. The truth is, most only have one gun that's mounted front and center or in the wing root, and it's usually a 30 millimeter. God, I wish it was usually a 30 millimeter. He, he was so close. He was so close. He had it. He had it. He was like, they're, they're not 50 cows. I love this. And then he says they usually have a 30. Dude, I would love if we all had 30 millimeters. In fact, there's a song, Dos Gringos. We all wish we had the gun like the A-10. Uh, they're 20 millimeter. Just about every fighter, uh, except for, you know, like Fat Amy, um, with his 25 millimeter and the A-10 was 30 millimeter, U.S. I'm talking. Uh, those are all 20 millimeter. So, yeah, no. Sad thing is, movies are really missing out on some quality material. For one, the sound of the autocannon, such as a 25 millimeter F-35. We don't really talk about that one. Strange and even scary sound. Oh, boy. Generally brief. Some rotary guns fire 5,000. You have 100%. Number four, VTOL jets can act like helicopters. Boy, that's a true one. We did that one on, um, what was that? Uh, Die Hard. Uh, experienced fighter pilot would laugh. They saw the F-35 lift off, pivot straight into flying, as some seem to do. Reality is, most of the lifting and landing is automated and turning before you're ready to fly is a silly notion. Yep. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I agree with that one. That's true. Air Force has less aircraft than the Navy or the Army. Uh, that's one of those things that's, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but that used to be like true. We used to say the Air Force had more boats than the Navy because they had these really small boats for like water survival and stuff. Um, and then the Air Force, the Navy had more aircraft. I don't know where that comes from. I guess if these numbers are correct, then that's fine. I, I that's, I, I can't imagine anybody. This is really a myth here. All right. Number two. Fighter pilots are the best pilots ever. That is not a myth. That is correct. Consider this. Would you rather have your very best pilot flying a single man fighter jet, most often the F-16 at 64 million each? Yes. Or carrying hundreds of troops over hostile territory. The knowledge and capabilities of fighter pilots are formidable, but the men with the most hours, levelless heads, and best records go where the most important stuff is happening. The very highest position being a 747 passenger jet, Air Force One. Air Force One pilot is trained, defensive flying, and a two... Where did you get this? This is stupid. What? This is dumb. While the actual best pilot is very arbitrary, the most experienced, trained, and proven airborne simply doesn't include fighter pilots. Wrong. Holy crap, wrong. Uh, I'll explain. Let's just read the whole thing. Let's read the whole thing. Still, the strategically discouraged stunts that include extreme view forces and the most expensive training result in crowd-pleasing, Thunderbirds and blue angles. I love my angles to be blue. These highly skilled officers are picked from the ranks of the fighter pilots to demonstrate the skill and precision of the U.S. pilots in the most baseline of fighter jets, the F-16. Well, the blue angles fly the F-18s or Super Hornet. So this is dumb. Okay. Before everybody gets triggered, because everybody's going to get triggered, I have nothing against heavy pilots, herbivores, those that fly the C-17s and stuff, they're all part of a very important mission. They do great things. They have skills. However, comma, when you talk about flying fighters, the admin or the motherhood is takeoff, landing, cruise, point A to point B. We don't talk about it unless something goes wrong. It is a small portion of what we do flying fighters. When you fly heavies, that is your entire mission. Now, sometimes they do cool stuff. They land on... Uh, austere environments and they, you know, throw people out the back and, and do some really cool stuff with really big jets. But their entire mission is the motherhood of a fighter. And that is why historically fighter pilots have been picked from the top graduates of pilot training. You have to get fighter grades in order to go fly fighters. And that is because 
you are single seat most of the time, strike eagle with the exception, you are responsible for your aircraft and usually between uh, one other, three other, sometimes an entire mission, that it's just you and you're responsible for the whole strike package. And not only do you have to do that under G and in a small confined cockpit, but you have to do it working weapon systems, radars, bombs, targeting pods, all that stuff. This is ignorance. This is just stupid. The Air Force One thing is an airliner job. Yeah, they added a couple things that they can do. You know, okay, great. It's an airliner job. I've flown airliners. In fact, I'm an airline pilot. It's the most, it's, it's easy. It's boring compared to flying a fighter. I mean, it's literally, you are trained for when things go wrong and you hope nothing goes wrong. But on an average fighter mission, your whole job, your whole life is training toward tactics and reaching an objective, striking an objective, flying you know, 250 feet at 540 knots with a with three other aircraft. Dogfighting, trying to think under nine Gs, trying to, to do all the things. It's both physical and mental. So I don't know where this came from. It's stupid. The reason they have more flight time is because they fly longer missions. Average fighter sortie between one and two hours, typically. Now in, in deployment time, you fly six, seven hour missions and those suck because you're single seat. But... Of course, heavy pilots get more hours because that's what they do. That's why when you go fly for the airlines, they actually give you a conversion. You get like a, it's like a one point something for every sortie you get because you get, they realize that, yeah, a 1500 hour fighter guy is probably more experienced than a 2000 hour heavy guy because again, you got all this time. Plus you're in a crew, you know, who's flying, you know, sometimes it's pilot monitoring, pilot flying, all that stuff. When you're single seat, you're always pilot flying, always, period. I mean, nobody else is there. So uh, that's just an, an ignorant take, um, just stupid. That's not true. Um, and this, the, I, I, his argument doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with the Thunderbirds and Blue Angels thing. Okay, number one, uh, Top Gun is not a real school. Who thought that? Where is the, how did this become a myth? Many think the concept of Top Gun is fiction, thought up for the famous 80s movie featuring Thomas Cruise, Mapother the fourth. Yes, that's his real name. Really? You see that one? I didn't know. The wording in the opening title sequence is pretty specific, so it's hard to say where this originated, but the school really exists and operates today. That's true. Out of uh, Fallon. Uh, Nazi, which they hate it when you call it that. United States Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor Programs, SFTI, aka Top Gun, teaches the best of the best. I'm going to go ahead and argue with that one because as he points out here, it's a uh, what is it? Nine week long class used to be six. I would say the Air Force weapons instructor course, which is six months long, six months, six weeks, nine weeks. Yeah, you want to find the best of the best. Go to Nellis. Technique only, my opinion. Throw hate in the comments, if you will. And that's it. And Wright is from Utah. He likes to bike and ski and drive fast. So he doesn't know anything about fighter jets. And that's pretty evident. Cool. There you go. Um, good try, Wyatt, but mm, not great. I should start writing car, car stuff. Just whatever. The 10 myths you know about the, the new Corvette C8. Just start writing stuff. Just see what happens. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I saw this and I was like, yeah, we need to talk about it. All right, so coming up, uh, we actually got some serious stuff coming up next week. We're going to do the AIB review on the fatal T-38C mishap. That happened uh, out of Donnelly Field in uh, Alabama. And um, more uh, DCS with Jolly Pilot uh, videos uh, coming up and more stuff for the channel. We got some uh, racing to happen, some more helicopter videos. Should be a lot of fun. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.